Hi guys, it's Sheena from Teton Raptor Center and I'm here to give you all this week's patient update. Just like last week, we have over 20 birds in care and unfortunately we just don't have the time to cover every single patient in this week's update, but we will cover some of our newer cases and some of the birds that we didn't get the chance to talk about last week. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to start things off with our most recent release. This is a Swainson's hawk dangling from barbed wire. So he was initially entangled in barbed wire. We were able to successfully rehab him and get him back to the wild. Here he is flying away. Initially, he did have some soft tissue injuries from the barbed wire around his legs. However, we were very fortunate that he was found quickly. And here he is getting released back out into the wild. Enjoy some of these amazing photos we were able to capture of it. Our second release of the week is Swainson's Hawk 83. This bird initially came from Idaho Falls after he was hit by a car and he got released back out into the wild. Moving on to our current patients, here we have Red-Tailed Hawk 721, and this adult initially came in due to a fractured metacarpus in her left wing. Here we are zooming in on that metacarpus. You can see kind of a brown lump at the corner of her wing, and that is actually just a piece of tape, which is currently covering a metal pin that is sticking into the metacarpus bone so that it heals in alignment. Here we have Northern Harrier 83, and this bird initially came in due to a pelvis fracture on both sides of her pelvis. It is healing up very nicely, and this bird is able to fly around really, really well. We don't want her to be flying too much while things are still healing, so she only has some low perching in her enclosure right now, but she is so mobile and getting around so well, so we're really excited about this one. Here we have Golden Eagle 86 in his flight barn enclosure. Right now he is unable to fly, but he is able to get up to that perch that he's currently on, and we're going to continue to assess him to see what progress he's capable of. Next up is Swainson's Hawk 88, and this juvenile bird came in due to a pelvic fracture, a quite severe one at that, and was initially unable to stand for uh, the first couple of weeks. Uh, here he is in the ICU standing up for the first time this week, so we are seeing some progress, which we're really excited about. We're definitely not out of the woods yet, but we do like the progress that we're seeing so far. Next, we have Osprey 815, and this juvenile bird came from Wilson, Wyoming. He was found close to his nest tower and unfortunately was very weak and found very emaciated. Typically, this can happen if the adult birds aren't taking care of their young. And in this particular situation, we did actually find out that one of the adults on that nest had unfortunately died. So we don't know what happened to the adult, uh, but we do know that one of the babies, the this one in particular did suffer as a result. And so we do have the bird here. We've got it on a great diet, so it's gaining weight every day. It is a little bit cold, so it's in a heated oxygen enclosure, and we're gonna hope to see some progress over the next few days. Last but not least is Swainson's Hawk 816, and unfortunately this bird was illegally shot. Um, there are two pellets that ended up in this bird. One ended up in her left leg, which you can see it's that round circular object in the left leg over here. And then another one ended up in her left wing. Uh, luckily, we were able to extract the pellet from her left wing. So you can see that in this photo here is where the pellet entered her body and we were able to get that out. We did save it in a Ziploc bag and there is a criminal investigation underway on this particular case. All right, that's all we've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I look forward to talking with you all next week. Bye!